Yo, 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 guys, welcome back today. And today we're going to be talking about another peoples. We haven't talked about our peoples for uh, quite some time. So today we're going to be talking about another peoples. And the peoples that we're going to be talking about are the Luo. And the Luo are located throughout Central and East Africa. So the Luo peoples are located in various East African and Central African countries and speak such languages like Kiswahili. Let's be more specific though and talk about the Luo that are located in Kenya. Originally, the Luo were cattle herders, but eventually became farmers. The Luo speak multiple languages, including English, Kiswahili, and their native Luo language. We must note, though, how different these languages are grammatically and vocabulary-wise, and this makes it more impressive that these peoples can speak these different languages. Now, during the child's birth, they are given names, and these names have to do with the day of the week, time of day, or even the kind of weather that was taking place during the birth. Now, as far as religion is concerned, the Luo were impacted by the Christian religion, but also have their own religion. In the traditional religion, spirits may be troublesome and may cause misfortune if they are not respected and remembered by the peoples. These spirits are referred to as shadow, and the god has many names such as the one certain to grant requests, he who is begged, and the ones who flow everywhere. Folklore is also very important to the peoples. Proverbs, legends, stories, and riddles are told by the widow grandmothers at their homes. People gather to listen to these folk tales and these proverbs and the stories and be taught their traditional culture at the grandmother's homes. The Luo also have rites of passage. People are discouraged against saying that a woman is pregnant in fear of jealous neighbors or ancestors. Women who have twins are treated with special attention and twins are believed to be results of evil spirits. Neighbors engage in foul language and dance to lift the burden of giving birth to the twins. Other passages such as young girls receiving tattoos on their backs and receiving piercings in their ears occur as well. Luo peoples in Kenya are among the few ethnic groups that do not circumcise their males as a rite of passage to manhood. Instead, they remove the six teeth from the lower jaw. Other traditions such as funeral services must be held in Luo land regardless of where the person lived during their lives. Now let's talk about kinship. Kinship is determined and traced through the male's lineage. This is very important due to politic alliance or political alliances, goods being exchanged, and marriage proposals. Names are also received through the male line as well, and women usually move to homestead or the homesteads of the husbands. The husband in return gives a bride wealth or a, a bride's wealth, which is given by him and his family. This bride's wealth or bride's wealth helps the wife maintain ties with the family throughout her life. In the process of bride wealth or the bride's wealth, the two families negotiate and the negotiation could be had for many years. Usually a person with no interest to each family is used to mediate between the intense family negotiations. Now after the bride wealth is exchanged and the children born, there cannot be divorce. Even if the two separate, the couple is still considered married to the Luo. This bride's wealth is primarily paid in cattle and this payment value usually depends on her education, appearance, and health. The woman also builds alliances with her husband's family by maintaining strong relationships with her sisters and brothers who live back at home or her home. Women can enhance their influence and power by having children within the Luo society. As these children grow, they take care of her interests and many Luo homesteads practice a man having more than one wife and having multiple wives. That's why I said uh, bride's wealth or bride's wealth before. In Luo areas that accept a man having more than one wife, there are traditional ideas that must be followed such as the first wife, also referred to as the great wife, her house is located at the back of the homestead. Wives that were married after her have houses to the right and to the left in order of marriage. Sons have homes next to one another at the main gate of the compound in order of their birth. The husband's brothers live on the edge of the compound near its center, though that is only if they have not formed their own homestead yet. 
Last but not least, the husband's home is near the center of the compound. The children will eventually build a large house for their mother, especially if she was the great wife or the first wife of their father. This is very necessary because it's found improper for the younger wives to have a larger home than wives who were more senior to them. Social principles and being visited is also very important to the Luo peoples. Funerals also are an obligation and during this time, consumption of beer, meats, and drinks are common practice. Funerals usually last for four days for males and for three days for females or women. After expression of sorrow and burial, there is a celebration and feasting. Now, an animal that is seen as a very important animal is the rooster. And the roosters are considered masculine by the Luo. So when a man has passed and has died, a rooster is taken from his home and eaten by his relatives. Roosters are considered masculine by the Luo. So when a man has passed, a rooster is taken from his house and eaten by his relatives. This event shows the end of the homestead and that man's homestead. Funerals are also where many young people meet and see members of the opposite sex. Funerals are also a place where elders discuss marriage alliances that they wish to see through. The living areas of the Luo in rural areas are commonly built by woven twigs and mud. There is also another style where the roof is made of metal. A home that will be made more permanent is made of brick walls and a roof made of iron sheets or tiles. These materials symbolize success and are prestige items. Now the Luo living in the metropolis area such as Nairobi and Kenya live through different classes like many societies. Now Luo living in the metropolis area such as Nairobi in Kenya live through different classes like many societies. Some are elite Kenyans living in lavish homes while others live in poverty stricken areas. Now the primary crop for the Luo is maize also known as corn, sorghum and millet as well. With the important cash crop being cotton, sugarcane, tobacco and coffee. Catfish are usually used for the bride's wealth and fish such as tilapia are a big staple of the Luo peoples. Cattle are usually used for the bride's wealth and fish such as tilapia are a big staple for the Luo peoples. Another staple food eaten many times throughout the day is ugali. Ugali is a maize meal stirred in boiling water until it becomes smooth and thick like porridge. This dish is always eaten with stew, meat, or greens. So guys, today we learned about the Luo peoples, the peoples that are centralized in or throughout East Africa and parts of Central Africa. And these peoples, we talked about their traditions, uh, some of their cultures, some live in the rural areas very traditionally, some live in the city and they probably still have traditional uh, habits and but they live in a uh, you know bigger area which would be the city of any of these different countries and as always guys we learn about other peoples today so like subscribe share um, as always everything is Afric Network and always as I always say each one teach one spread the knowledge and until next time guys peace one love what's up what's up hey Shalom what up hi Africa